سلام سلام اواتای تگارو وانی تگارو کلکم کمال لکم یه آبشاریه سلام سلام تگارو اندی ناتو دانا ناتوی یه آبشانی های گایز دیس از یه آبشا مدنیت and today I decided to go ahead and read um, the article that was published by New York Times yesterday uh, regarding um, the war in Tigray written by Declan Walsh. The reason why I decided to read the article for you guys is because I know it's a very lengthy article and then even though it has a lot of good contents in it I don't think most people have time to sit down and read or maybe we don't have the culture to sit down and read so we we'll just pause it so um, I decided to read it so that way you can listen to it while driving your car or maybe working or taking you know I don't know whatever you, you're doing um, so it reads like this it, it was published yesterday December the 15th 2021 um, the article was the Nobel Peace Prize that paved the way for war this is the story behind how Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed won a Nobel Peace Prize for making peace with his country's longtime enemy and then uh, used the alliance to plan a war secret meetings with a dictator clandestine Troops move, uh, troop movements, months of quiet preparations for a war that was supposed to be swift and bloodless. New evidence showed that Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed had been planning military campaign in the northern Tigray region for months before war erupted one year ago, setting off a cascade of destruction and ethnic violence that has engulfed Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country. Mr. Abiy, a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, seen recently uh, in fatigues commanding troops on the battlefront, insists, insists that war was foisted upon him, that ethnic Tigrayan fighters fired the first shot in November 2020 when they attacked a federal military base in Tigray, slaughtering soldiers in their beds. That account has become an article of faith for Mr. Abiy and his supporters. In fact, it was a war of choice for Mr. Abiy. One was wills set in motion even before the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Peace Prize win in 2019 that for a time, uh, for a time, into a global icon of nonviolence. The Nobel was uh, the Nobel win stemmed largely from. Uh, the unlikely peace deal Mr. Abiy struck with Isaiah Zavorki, the authoritarian leader of Eritrea, within months of coming to power in 2018. That pact ended two decades of hostility and war between the neighboring rivals and <coughs> inspired lofty hopes for a transformed region. Instead, a Nobel emboldened Mr. Abiy and Mr. Isaiah to secretly plot a course for war against their mutual foes in Tigray, according to current and former Ethiopian officials who spoke on the conditions and the condition of anonymity to avoid reprisals or protect family members inside Ethiopia. In the months before fighting erupted in November 2020, Mr. Abiy <coughs> moved troops toward Tigray and sent military cargo planes into Eritrea. Behind closed doors, his advisors and military generals debated the merits of a conflict. Those who disagreed were fired, interrogated, at a gunpoint, or forced to leave. Still dazzled by Mr. Abiy's Nobel win, the West ignored those warning signs, the officials said, but ultimately it helped to pave the way to war. <clears throat> From that day, Abiy felt he was one of the most influential influential personalities in the world. Gabriel Miskel Kassa, a former senior Abiy administration official, now in exile in Europe, said in a, an interview. He felt he had a lot of international support and in that if he went to war in Tigray, nothing would happen. And he was right, he added. Mr. Abiy's spokeswoman, the information minister of Eritrea, and the 
the Norwegian no Nobel Committee did not respond to questions for this article. The quick and easy military victory that Mr. Avi promised has not come to pass. The Tigrayans <coughs> routed the Ethiopian troops and their Eritrean allies over the summer and last month came within 160 miles of the capital Addis Ababa, prompting Mr. Abi to declare a state of emergency. Recently, the pendulum uh, has swung back with government forces retaking two strategic strategic uh, towns that had been captured by the Tigrayans, the, the latest twist in a conflict that has already cost tens of thousands of lives and pushed hundreds of thousands into famine-like conditions. Analysts say that Mr. Abi's journey from peacemaker to battlefield commander is a cautionary tale of how the West, despite to find a new hero in Africa, got this leader spectacularly wrong. The West needs to make up for its mistakes in Ethiopia, said Alex Rondos, formerly <coughs> the European Union's top diplomat in the Horn of Africa. It misjudged Abi. It empowered Isaias. Now the issue is whether a country of 110 million people can be prevented from unraveling. The Nobel Committee takes a chance. Accepting the Nobel Peace Prize in December of 2019, Mr. Abi, a former soldier, drew on his own experience to eloquently capture the horror of conflict. War is the epitome of hell, he told. He told a dis distinguished audience at Oslo City Hall. I knew because I have been there and back. To his foreign admirers, the soaring rhetoric was further proof of an exceptional leader. In his first months in power, Mr. Abi, then 41, freed political prisoners, unshackled the press, and promised free elections in Ethiopia. <clears throat> his peace deal with Eritrea, a pariah state, was a political moonshot for the um, strife -torn, torn Horn of Africa region. Even so, the five member Norwegian Nobel Committee knew was taken. Taking on a chance on Mr. Abi said, uh, was that Henrik? Henrik Yurdal of Peace Research Institute, Oslo, uh, which analyzes the committee's decision. Mr. Abi's sweeping reforms were fragile and easily re reversible, Mr. Yurdal said. And the peace with Eritrea centered on his relationship with Mr. Isaias, a ruthless and battle hardened autocrat. autocrat. My partner and commander in peace, Mr. Abi called him in Oslo. Many Ethiopians also wanted to believe in Mr. Abi's promise at a gala dinner for the new prime minister in Washington in July of 2018. Dr. Conte Musa, an Ethiopian living in Sweden, announced to applause that he was nominating Mr. Abi for a Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize. Back in Sweden, Dr. Conte persuaded Andres. Uh, Osterberg, a parliamentarian uh, from a low-income Stockholm district with a large immigrant population to join his cause. Uh, Mr. Osterberg traveled to Ethiopia, met with Mr. Abi, and was impressed. He signed the Nobel Papers, one of, the, one of at least two nominations for Mr. Abi that year. In selecting Mr. Abi, the Nobel Committee hoped to encourage him, to encourage him further down the path of democratic reforms, Mr. Yurdal said. Even then, <clears throat> though there was signs that Mr. Abi's peace deal wasn't all it seemed. Its initial fruits like daily commercial flights between the two countries and reopened borders were rolled back and reversed in a matter of months. <clears throat> Promised trade, promise trade pact failed to materialize and there was a little, and there was little Constant, uh, concrete cooperation, the Ethiopian official said. Eritrea's, Eritrea's spices, however, gained an edge. Ethiopian intelligence detected an influx of Eritrean agents, some pausing as refugees who gathered information about Ethiopian military capabilities, um, a senior Ethiopian security official said. The Eritreans were particularly interested in Tigray, he said. 
Mr. Isaias had a long and bitter grudge against the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, TPLF, which dominated Ethiopia for nearly <coughs> three decades until Mr. Abiy came to power in 2018. He blamed Tigrayan leaders for the fierce border war of 1998 to uh, 2000 between Ethiopia and Eritrea, a former province of Ethiopia in which as many as 100,000 people were killed. Were killed. He also blamed them for Eritrea's painful international isolation, including United Nations sanctions. For Mr. Abiy, it was more complicated. He served in the TPLF dominated governing coalition for eight years and was made a minister in 2015. But as an ethnic Oromo, Ethiopia's largest ethnic group, he never felt fully accepted by Tigrayans and suffered numerous humiliations. Uh, suffered numerous humiliations, former officials and friends said. Tigrayans fired Mr. Abiy from his leadership position at a powerful intelligence agency in 2010. In power, he came to see the Tigrayans still sm smarting from their ulcer as the biggest threat to his burgeoning ambitions. A spy chief among the singers and dancers. Mr. Abi and Mr. Isaias met at least 14 times from the time they signed the peace deal until war broke out, public records and news reports show. Unusually, the meetings were mostly one-on-one -on -one without aides or note-takers, two former Ethiopian officials said. They also met in secret uh, on at least three other occasions in 2019 and 2020. Mr. Isaias flew into Addis Ababa and announced, one former official said, aviation authorities were instructed to keep quiet and an unmarked car was sent to take, to take him, Mr. Isaias, to Mr. Abi's compound. Around that time, Eritrean officials also regula uh, regularly visits, visited the Amhara region, which has a long history of rivalry with Tigray. Crowds thronged um, the streets when Mr. Isaias visited the ancient Amara city of Gondor in November 2018, chanting, Isaias, Isaias, Isaias. Later, a troop of Eritrean singers and dancers visited Amhara, but the delegation included Eritrea's spy chief, uh, spy chief Abraha Kasa, who used the trip uh, to meet with Amhara security leaders, the senior Ethiopian official, uh, the senior Ethiopian official said, Eritrea later later agreed to train sixty thousand troops from the Amhara. Hold on, I missed it. <coughs> yeah, where did it? <coughs> I think I touched it in. I'm almost there. Okay. From the, uh, okay, it said, um, hold on. Okay who used a trip to meet with Amhara security leaders, the senior Ethiopian official said. Eritrea later agreed to train 60,000 troops from the Amhara Special Forces um, a parliamentary unit that later deployed to Tigray. Speaking at the World Economy, speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, in February of 2019, <coughs> Mr. Abiy advocated an effective merger of Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti, a suggestion that dismayed Ethiopian officials who saw it as straight from the playbook of Mr. Isaias. Aides um, also saw the remarks as further proof of Mr. Abiy's impulsive tendencies, leading, uh, leading them to cancel his new conference during the Nobel ceremonies in Oslo 10 months later. Irreconcilable visions lead to war. Mr. Abiy viewed the Tigrayans as a threat to
to his authority, perhaps even his life. From his first day in power, the Tigrayans uh, had preferred another candidate as prime minister, and Mr. Abi told friends he feared Tigrayan security officials were trying to assassinate him, an acquittance said. At the prime minister's residence, so, uh, residence, soldiers were ordered to stand guard on every floor. Mr. Abi purged ethnic Tigrayans from his security detail and created a Republican guard a hand-picked unit under his direct control whose troops were sent for to the United Arab Emirates. A powerful new ally also close to Mr. Isaias, a former Ethiopian official said. The unexplained killing of the Ethiopian military chief, General Saad Makonen, an ethnic Tigrayan who was shot dead by a bodyguard in June of 2019, heightened tensions. The rift was the Tigrayans uh, was also <clears throat> driven by profound political differences. Within weeks of the Nobel Prize decision, Mr. Ravi cr uh, created the Prosperity Party, which incarnated his vision of a strong centralized Ethiopian government. But then, vision was antema to the uh, millions of Ethiopians who yearned for greater region autonomy, in particular the Tigrayans and members of his own ethnic group, the Oromo, accounting for about one-third of the country's 110 million people. The Oromo have long felt excluded from power. <coughs> Many hoped Mr. Abi rises rise we change that but the prosperity party catered to mr abi's ambitions not theirs and in late 2019 violent clashes between police officers and protesters erupted across the oromia region culminating in the death in june 2020 of a popular singer Hachalundesa. against this tumultuous uh, Backdrop, the slight, the slight toward war accelerated. Ethiopian military cargo planes began to make clandestine flights at night to base in, to bases in Eritrea. To bases in Eritrea, said a senior Ethiopian official, Mr. Abi's top aides and military officials privately debated the merits of war in Tigray. The former Tigray, the former official said. The centers, including Ethiopia's army, Chief General Adam Mohammed. By then, the Tigrayans were also geared up for war, searching for allies in the Northern Command, Ethiopia's most powerful military unit, which was based in Tigray. In September, the Tigrayans went ahead with the regional election in open defiance of an order from Mr. Abi. Mr. Abi moved troops from the Somalia and Oromia region towards Tigray. In a video conference call <coughs> in mid-October, <coughs> Mr. Abi told governing party officials that he would intervene military, militarily in Tigray and that it would take only three to five days to oust the region's, the region's leaders, said Mr. Gebra Meskel, the former senior official now in exile. On November 2nd, the Europe, European Union foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell publicly appealed to both sides to halt provocative military deployments. The next evening, Tigrayan forces attacked an Ethiopian military base, calling it a preemptive strike. Eritrean soldiers flooded into Tigray from the north. Amhara special forces arrived from the south. Mr. Abi fired General Adam and announced a law enforcement operation in Tigray. Ethiopia's ruinous uh, civil war was underway. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> and probably I saved, I saved your time and also energy. Mm. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.